Chapter 2, The Sheriff of Jericho Narrated by Deckard I read the note again. It's short, to the point, and cuts me to the core. I crush the piece of paper in my palm and squeeze my fist until beads of sweat form on my brow. It ain't working. Nothing they've tried has. I catch a glimpse of myself in the small mirror on my desk. My own reflection disturbs me. The sleepless nights are taking their toll. Deep gray circles have formed under my eyes and won't go away. My hair, which is slicked back against my head, needs to be washed and cut. Or does it? I wonder. Maybe that's just pointless vanity. Not working. I consider that. She did warn me, but if this doesn't work, what then? I hurl the crumpled note into the ashes of the jail's fireplace. Fear and anxiety chew up my gun. I grab my hat and slide it onto my head. It's not over. Not yet, I remind myself. That allows me to draw on my anger. That's the only thing that keeps me sane. The fury. I storm out the front door of the jail. Outside, the posse finishes prepping our horses. My latest hired on deputy, a cocky young ironman named Fancy, leans against a nearby support post. He pushes himself off it and straightens up when he sees me. Flint is back. Just in time. So he is. Flint's horse approaches the jail with a second horse in tow. A man I know sits on the trailing horse. Harold Plunkett. The bastard's steel hands are manacled together. He looks defeated, as he damn well should. Good job, Flint. I think, and not for the first time. I haven't got much hope left, but this is something. He have it? I ask the one-eyed bounty hunter. I'd prefer Flint to be sworn in as a deputy, but he only takes one-off jobs. The Sinaman, or whatever the hell he is, likes to keep to himself. I keep paying him because he's too good not to keep around. He reaches into his satchel and draws out a small metal cylinder, the stolen energy cell. A device capable of powering giant machines for years. Insanely valuable. This'll give me credibility. Maybe even buy me some time. Flint tosses me the cell. I catch it. Stuff it into my vest's breast pocket and give Flint a nod of thanks. Then I turn to the piece of shit behind him. Plunkett's eyes meet mine. He can't hide his fear. And beneath that fear, anger. The frustration of a defeated man who's run out of options. My lips play at a smile while his curl into a snarl. Sheriff. He mutters the word like a curse dipped in sarcasm. You know, Tuckard, you can go straight to- I draw my gun and shoot him between the eyes. His lifeless body topples over backwards and falls into the dirt street. Shoving my smoking pistol back into his holster, I look over at Tats and Gary who are both standing in the street next to their horses. I motion to Tats, the one female deputy in my employ, and say, Axe. The olive-skinned Tiwan sorceress tosses me a tomahawk as I stride to plunk its dead body. Lifting the small axe over my head, I slam it down into his forearm. Feels good. Blood splatters onto my boots as I bring the tomahawk up and down twice more. It helps remove the fear. Eases my nerves. I wipe the bloody blade on the dead thief's shirt and then grab the steel hand that's no longer attached to plunk its arm. Turning it over, I admire the gears, the pistons and rivets and the plating. My frayed nerves are satiated. I take a deep breath as a wave of calm washes over me. I needed that, I realize. Tossing the tomahawk back to Tats, I turn to the bounty hunter. Got another job for you, Flint, I say. He hesitates. He's been doing that lately. Hesitating. I don't like it. 
My eyes narrow as he considers it, but he nods. Good. I need him. He's as good as Tats. Maybe better. When? Now. The safe house. I tell him. I don't wait for him to respond. I know they all hate the safe house, but I don't give a shit. It's a necessary evil, and I don't have a choice. Plunkett's steel limb in hand, I stride to my horse and mount up. Fancy, Gary, and Tats follow my lead. I can feel the fear returning. It pisses me off. I kick the horse and take off at a quick clip. As I pass Plunkett's dead body, I stare at the pooling blood around his head and severed arm. Serves you right, you thieving bastard. You deserved worse. I should have handed you over to the Dusk Finders. But maybe your stupidity buys me more time. I can't help myself. Despite the fear and the anger, I smile.